In this biochemistry video, we will be talking about purine synthesis, sometimes referred to as de novo purine synthesis. Let's start with a brief overview just so you can familiarize yourself with the content that I'll be talking about. So purines are substances that are incorporated into DNA, RNA, ATP, GTP, cyclic AMP, CGMP, and coenzymes. Or in other words, they're very important. And because they're very important, the body needs a way to create them. Defects in purine regulation can cause different pathology like cancer, gout, neuropathology, and immunological diseases. Purine synthesis, as it's aptly named, creates purine nucleotides from a starter molecule. So the body has various ways to grab different substances and then strap on more pieces of chemical information to those substances and create purine nucleotides. Now the goal, the overall goal of de novo purine synthesis is to create something called inosine 5-monophosphate, otherwise known as IMP. Now IMP is an intermediate that can be transformed into either AMP or GMP depending on cellular needs. And as you'll see, depending on whether you create AMP or GMP, those individual substances will go on to selectively create the nucleotides that you want. Lastly, purine synthesis is an energy intensive pathway. So it requires active transport of other substrates and cofactors from other biochemical reactions. So whether we're talking about other biochemical reactions, the products of those reactions are gonna get shuttled via active transport. There's gonna be a lot of energy input to utilize them in the de novo purine synthesis pathway. So with de novo purine synthesis, where we start is with ribose 5-phosphate. And as you may recall from my other video on biochemistry, this comes from the pentose phosphate pathway. So we start with ribose 5-phosphate, and ribose 5-phosphate is converted into something called 5-phosphoribosyl-1-pyrophosphate, or simply put on USMLE, COMLEX, and usually in class exams, PRPP. So we convert ribose 5-phosphate to PRPP, and the enzyme that catalyzes that conversion is PRPP synthetase. Now, as I've pointed out in my previous biochemical videos, anytime you see synthetase, it's going to make whatever the name is in front of synthetase. So in this case, PRPP synthetase is going to synthetase or synthesize or create PRPP. So that helps you remember what actually is happening here. And as you can see, this step requires ATP. So ATP in the process will go to AMP. Now that we have PRPP, PRPP will be converted to 5-phosphoribosylamine, or 5-PRA. And the enzyme that catalyzes this conversion is glutamine phosphoribosyl amidotransferase, or GPAT. This is the rate-limiting enzyme of de novo purine synthesis, so it's one that you absolutely need to memorize. For whatever reason, on exams, on USMLE, on COMLEX, test writers love to ask you the rate-limiting enzyme of various reactions, so here's something you should know. And please note that in this step, glutamine is converted to glutamate. So one of the things that I'm going to point out here is that de novo purine synthesis requires substances, one of which is glutamine. And there's, there are more coming, but glutamine is just the first that we can see here. Now, once we have 5-phosphoribosylamine or 5-PRA, that will undergo a series of subsequent steps, which I'm not going to show you because you don't need to know those enzymes and you don't need to know those byproducts, but it will eventually create IMP. So we go from 5-PRA down to IMP through a series of reactions that you really don't need to know. However, what you do need to know are the intermediates and the cofactors that are required in each of those steps because this does show up on tests. So from 5-PRA down to IMP, you will need various substances including glycine, formal tetrahydrofolate, glutamine, carbon dioxide, and aspartate. And then as you saw the one step above, we needed glutamine and ATP. So you need to memorize these five substances that get you from 5-PRA down to IMP because the whole purpose and a lot of the, your in-class exam questions will be about what kind of native substances are going to be required to derive nucleotides. And here you see the answer. So glycine, 
formal THF, glutamine, CO2, and aspartate. And so the way that I memorize this is go forward and go create an IMP. G for glycine, F for formal tetrahydrofolate, G for glutamine, C for CO2, and A for aspartate. So in this step, going from 5PRA down to IMP, you go forward and go create an IMP. And these things are very, very important for de novo purine synthesis. So now let's say we've gotten down to IMP. IMP can be converted into either AMP or GMP. And then depending on which one you create, AMP will create adenine nucleotides and GMP will be used to create guanine nucleotides. So in other words, IMP is the very important branch point in de novo purine synthesis that allows the body to select for which nucleotide it wants to synthesize. Now something I want to point out here that's important is IMP being converted to GMP. That is done by the enzyme inosine monophosphate dehydrogenase. And we'll come back to this in just a second, but there is a there are various medications that inhibit this enzyme. So just keep that in the back of your mind. So now if we go back to our overall biochemical pathway, here's what we have. Ribose 5-phosphate turns into PRPP. And then PRPP turns into 5-PRA through the rate-limiting enzyme, GPAT. 5-PRA will go through the series of five or so reactions that will bring you down to IMP using those various substances that I gave you that mnemonic for, and that will create IMP. And at this point, the body will decide if it wants adenine nucleotides or guanine. So it'll either turn that IMP into AMP or GMP. Now, some feedback mechanisms you should be aware of is that once the body has created AMP or GMP, these substances will partially or fully inhibit the rate limiting enzyme of de novo purine synthesis. So if you have GMP present by itself, it will partially inhibit GPAT. If you have AMP present by itself, it will partially inhibit GPAT. And if you have both AMP and GMP together present, it will fully inhibit the rate limiting enzyme. GPAT. So in other words, the downstream products from de novo purine synthesis will turn off the rate limiting enzyme. And this should make perfect sense to you because if you've already created the goal product of your pathway, you don't want the pathway to keep going. So once you get to AMP and GMP, it turns off de novo purine synthesis by inhibiting glutamine phosphoribosyl amidotransferase. And that's what I'm trying to illustrate here. Now, we have certain medications, this is more relevant for USMLE or COMLEX, we have certain medications that are going to inhibit various points in this pathway. And these medications come into play as immunosuppressive agents that can be used clinically. So the first example is azathioprine and 6-mercaptopurine. Both of these medications inhibit de novo purine synthesis overall. So you don't have to worry about an individual enzyme or anything like that. But know that 6-mercaptopurine and azathioprine, which is 6-mercaptopurine's uh, prodrug, both of those inhibit de novo purine synthesis. And then lastly, we have two more medications. One is called mycophenolate and the other is ribavirin. And these medications are going to inhibit inosine monophosphate dehydrogenase, which is the enzyme that I showed you one or two slides back that converts IMP into GMP. So we have these various immunosuppressive agents that can selectively target and inhibit different points in the de novo purine synthesis pathway. Now that does it for this video, but this video is going to be part one of three. So the next video that will be posted will be pyrimidine based production. And the one after that will be about purine salvage deficiencies. So keep your eye open for those two videos.